what I'm going to present, it's, it's related to my research interest. It's more preliminary work than what you have seen before. But I think there are a set of ideas that I would like to present to you that it's nice to discuss. Uh, so, uh, Patrick is there. So you will see some information theory in the presentation. So you could say, of course, it's correlated to the presentation of Patrick. And you could say it's the promoter who introduced the idea. In this case, I have to give credit to Patrick, who is really brought this formalism of information theory to the machine learning group. And so it's more the other way around. So I give credit to Patrick. Otherwise, it would be a correlation, a first correlation. <laughs> So, uh, so the talk is about feature selection. So, um, I think most of you are uh, aware of the importance of feature selection in uh, data science, in machine learning. Uh, the example that we have shown before, for instance, by Benjamin, you have, uh, you could have a lot of variables. If you have genes, you want to correlate, uh, or to uh, explain some variability. And so you would like to select uh, only the important features. So what is the goal of feature selector? Selecting relevant features. And now the question is, what is it as a relevant feature? Okay, so I will use a definition which has been uh, formalized by, by Coavi, which basically uh, differentiated between strongly relevant, weakly relevant, and irrelevant features. And uh, so, ideally, if you want to select for features, you would like only to select the strongly relevant features. So from a, a definition point of view, it's easy. Because you could say what is the relevant feature is the strongly relevant. This is the important feature. If I'm able to, to, to select them, the problem is solved. The problem is that indeed you are not able to measure and to estimate in an accurate ma manner the degree of strongly relevance. Why? Because typically the setting, uh, relevant setting, for instance, in bioinformatics are high dimensional settings. Uh, what does it mean? It would mean that the number of samples is comparable, sometimes is as uh, smaller as the number of variables. What does it mean that we are in face of a curse of dimensionality, well-known term? In practice, what does it mean? What is the curse? It means that if you want to estimate the relevance of a variable, the importance of a variable, you have a lot of field conditioning. So it means that you have a lot of variance. It means that just removing one sample could change a lot the value of your estimation. So this is a difficult problem from the estimation point of view. You could have false positives, so select features which are relevant or are not. And probably the most important part, which is also related, this makes the curves very, very important, is the context-dependent relevance of features. What, what Patrick was, uh, was explaining also before, if you have a multivariate dependence, the relevance of a variables depend on the context, on which other variables you are considering for doing the modeling. And so it could happen very well that one variable alone is not relevant, but together with the second one, it becomes extremely relevant. So this notion of cost context dependence, which is also implicit in the notion of strongly relevance and weakly relevance, makes the problem of feature selection very, very difficult. Uh, so basically, the, if, if you go back to statistics, this is more a sort of bias variance issue. So you have seen very exam uh, different examples of feature selection in the previous talk. Benjamin was talking of univariate ranking. Uh, basically, he was taking one gene at a time, finding the correlation with, uh, with the, the drug effect. And uh, this is uh, indeed something uh, which can be effective in selecting features, but typically is characterized by high bias. So you make a very strong assumption on the dependence between the input and the output. MRMR, which was mentioned by Patrick, is moving from the univariate to the bivariate. So you are slightly less biased, but again you are biased because basically our techniques, uh, like filters, these kind of techniques, use a small dimensionality. So to assess the quality and importance of a variables, they don't create large variate models, but they rely on small variate or models with a small number of, of variables. And so this is a possible solution that you have seen can be very effective, which is basically characterized by high bias and, and low variance. Low variance means that it's a stable solution. The reason why, for instance, Benjamin likes that, because it's very stable, uh, but it could be strongly biased because you make a lot of assumptions. On the other way, you could have the solution which are less biased in the sense that try to uh, retrieve the multivariate dependencies between the input and the output. But since they are multivariate, they are more brittle, they are more variant, they are more imprecise. 
And so this is typically what is done in, in wrappers. So you see this trade-off between different kind of techniques which try to tackle the same problem, finding the relevant features. So what I try to propose in this talk uh, is basically the idea that, uh, as we will see later, so in the feature selection, people know very well which quantity should be measured. The problem is that they are not able to measure it. Why? Because there are two dimensionality, there are too few samples. And so in some sense, it's a, it's a sort of odd story where you try to target something which is very difficult to, to estimate. So the idea could be to be probably not optimal, but good. They try to target a quantity which is affordable, which is feasible, and for which the selection of the maximum could be reliable. So we try in some sense to reduce our expectation and instead of targeting the strong relevance quantity, targeting another quantity that I call the probabilistic feature relevance, which basically is an expectation of weak relevance. And then I will talk also about a strategy which uh, is based on the pair estimation, which is typically a way using statistics to reduce variance and then to deal with this problem of instability. Okay, so I need some definition. Uh, Patrick introduced already mutual information. Mutual information is, is a crucial quantity in, in statistics, in machine learning. And, uh, but I think each time you think about mutual information, you should think also about conditional mutual information, which is probably still more relevant. Just to make an example, suppose that uh, uh, you want to estimate the quality of the pizza in a restaurant. Okay, so Y is the quality of the pizza in a restaurant, and X is the nationality of the restaurant. So you could say that, of course, if the nationality of the restaurant is Italian, the probability of having a good pizza is higher than if the nationality of the restaurant is Belgian. And so you could say, indeed, uh, X, nationality of the restaurant, brings a lot of information about Y. What does it mean, mutual information? It means that you reduce uncertainty. You, you, want, you go to a restaurant, you would like to have a good pizza, someone tells you, don't worry, it's an Italian restaurant, so you reduce your uncertainty. You are worried uh, without knowing the nationality of the restaurant, you had a certain uncertainty about the quality of the pizza. Now that you know that XJ is Italian, you reduce your uncertainty. You could also reduce your uncertainty if you know that XJ is Belgian. In some sense, you know that the pizza won't be so good. And so your uncertainty has been reduced. So the nationality is bringing information about the quality of the pizza. But the end is not the owner of the restaurant making the pizza, it's the cook. So basically you don't care that the owner is Italian, you care that the cook is Italian. So what does it mean? That the nationality of the restaurant brings no information about the pizza if you know the cook, the nationality of the cook. So what does it mean? that? Uh, an Italian cook in a Belgian restaurant would be better than uh, a Belgian cook in an Italian restaurant. And so it means that once you know the nationality of the cook, the nationality of the restaurant brings no more information. And so you see an example of the same variable nationality uh, with the same prediction problem, predicting the quality of the pizza, where XJ was very relevant without knowing its K. So nationality of the restaurant was very relevant when, once you don't know the cook, but once you know the cook, immediately this, this relevance go to zero. Because the uncertainty about the quality of the pizza is completely explained by the nationality of the cook. And so this is an example just to show you the trickiness also of, uh, uh, the tricky aspect of estimating the relevance of the variables. So in that context, XJ is extremely relevant. In this context, is almost no relevant, irrelevant. Okay, so uh, just to keep in mind that mutual information is a nice way to modeling how you reduce uncertainty about some targets, but that probably the, the notion which is more complete and more interesting is the one of conditional mutual information. Okay, now let's go using this notion of conditional mutual information, let's go to the notion of strong relevance. So basically we are rephrasing uh, the, the notion of strongly relevance which was introduced by Coavi in a probabilistic terms, in terms of mutual information. So this would be the ideal quantity you would like to compute about a variable. So suppose that you want to predict why. Why could be the quality of the pizza, could be the survival of the patient or whatever. And you would like to know if the variable xj is strongly relevant to predict why. What does it mean? That even if you know all the other variables that you measure, xj is still bringing information. Okay. Uh, so in the case of gene and survival of the patient, even if you know the measures of all the other genes, you need also the measure of that J's gene in order 
uh, to reduce the uncertainty. So adding this, uh, this J's gene reduces the uncertainty about the target map. Uh, so what does it mean? A variable is strongly relevant. It's always necessary for creating an optimal subset. And so it means that it carries some specific information that no other variables does. Okay? And so ideally, you would like to estimate this quantity. So the, the information that xj brings to y given all the others. And if you're able to estimate in an accurate manner that, that quantity, you have solved the problem of feature selection. Because basically it's only about that. So you could simply rank all your variables about the strongly relevant, the strong relevance, and then take the, the, the 10 strongest relevant variables. As you will see later, and as I already told, the problem that x minus j could be very large variate. You could have a lot of variables. And so this becomes a problem of multivariate estimation for which you don't have enough samples. And then you have a very bad estimation of that quantity. And this is typically the quantity that wrapper techniques try to estimate, but with problems once you don't have enough, enough samples. Uh, so this is uh, the, the most important variables you should select, the, the ones that are said to belong to the Markov blanket in the notion, in the notation of uh, Bayesian networks. But you could say, okay, there are variables which are not strongly relevant, but they are weakly relevant. What does it mean? That they are not strongly relevant, so if you know all the others, they are not necessary, but in some context, for some S, they bring some information. For instance, uh, the quality of the pizza depends on a lot of stuff, but if you know only the nationality of the restaurant, the nationality of the cook is weakly relevant because it's adding some information once you know already the nationality of the restaurant. And so you could have a measure of degree of weakly relevance, but now this degree of weakly relevance depends on the context. So while the, the quantity before was independent of the context because you had all the other variables given, here the degree of weakly relevance depends on which other variables you have considered. And then you could have the third case, a variable which is neither strongly or weakly relevant. So, of course, this is irrelevant variables, and probably they are the easier to, to remove. Okay, so from a theoretical point of view, the problem of feature selection, in my opinion, is very well defined because it's only about measuring this quantity. The, the problem of feature selection is a problem of estimation, that this quantity you are not able to estimate in an accurate manner. Uh, which is basically written here. So in a supervised learning task, if you were able to accurate, to est uh, estimate accurately this quantity Rj, you could rank the set of variables, determine the optimal subset, the problem that is not feasible in a situation where you have too few samples. Okay, so what is the idea? The idea of the talk is that, okay, the target should be this quantity, but it's too complex to, to estimate. Uh, this quantity is interesting, but is not enough informative about the relevance of the variables. The idea is very simple. So instead of taking this quantity, let's make an average of this quantity, an expectation over all the possible context sets, and let's give a weight. Of course, if you have a subset S, a set of features which is very bad, the weekly relevance is not very informative about the importance of the variable. But if the subset S is already quite informative, you could give a higher weight. So this, it's all about that. And so basically this is the idea of probabilistic feature relevance. If you look at that, it's only an estimation of the weekly relevance over the space of all the context. And uh, how is, how is characterized this, uh, this distribution? Basically giving a weight, which is the probability that this context is the optimal uh, subset belonging to the set of variables which are not containing j. So in some sense, the idea, uh, I cannot estimate well a strong relevance, so I focus on weak relevance, but instead of taking one generic weak relevance, I make an average over all the context and giving a weight which is proportional to the probability that this context is the best subset of variables not containing j. Okay, so this, uh, this idea is basically two advantages that you can target variables, uh, quantities where S is not so large variate. Uh, you could estimate uh, this term, and then since an expectation, you could use a sort of important sampling technique to compare uh, variables one at a time, and then have a sort of blocking of pairing uh, configuration where you collect a set of contexts. For each of these contexts, you compute this quantity, and then you have a paired comparison between variables in order to have a better ranking. Because at the end, what is relevant in feature selection is not really to have 
the right value of, var of relevance. You don't care that if the relevance is 10.5 or 10.6. The only thing that you care that the variables of variable 10 is higher than the, re the relevance of variable 8, for instance. And even if the quantity is not correctly estimated, the only thing that you are interested in is the ranking. And so, to, uh, in order to increase the robustness of the ranking, the idea of the approach is to create a set of contexts where you can compare the different variables. Yeah? I'm just wondering, do, would you favor a variable that is very good in a very small set of contexts versus a variable that's less informative but in a larger set of contexts? Uh, I see the question. For me, the only weight will depend on the context, on how the context is probable that this context is the best uh, S contained in X minus J. Okay, so basically we use a measure, you could use a measure of cross-validation, a measure of quality. Uh, it's not the fact that there are a lot of contexts. It's more about the fact that that context already brings information. So the fact of adding more information to something which is already very informative is better than bringing a lot of information to something which is not very informative. Thank you. This is, this, I see. I see the point. It could be also another. Okay. So the idea of probabilistic relevance is that they have the expected value of the weak relevance. Uh, so, if you look uh, at the fact that, uh, suppose that you know indeed what is the best subset which belongs x minus j. So basically, this subset will be all the variables minus the j, the j variables. And so, you go back in this definition to the strong relevance. So, if you have a lot of knowledge about the probability that the subset is the best, and you are able to identify the best subset, you go back to the definition of strong relevance. So, this is an, another nice aspect. Yeah. No, no, no. Okay. Whatever. Yeah, indeed. This is the best subset, but you could, I mean, this is, you could have a smaller subset than that one that are as informative. Of course, uh, uh, when you remove J, if you take all the other variables, this brings all the rest of the information. But if you have irrelevant variables, it could be a subset of that one, for instance. Uh, but in any case, you, you don't know. If you, if you knew already, you wouldn't do future selection. So, so basically, the idea is to use uh, uh, the, the quality of the subset as a weight. So just going to, to the... Uh, okay. There is a tricky part in the story because uh, I'm talking about, uh, uh, about uh, uh, conditional mutual information. So the tricky part could be that in order to have pairing, I should consider a set of sub of contexts. But in some of these contexts, there is the variable j contained. And since I want to have a paired blocking, I would like that for each context, I can compare all the variables. So it's a bit a tricky part. So if the context is variable 1, 2, 3, I couldn't uh, compute the mutual information of x1 given x1. So this is the reason why, basically, if xj belong to the context, I compute the reduction of the information if I remove the variable xj. Okay, this is a trick in order to have indeed a paired comparison. And then here you have uh, the final formula. So basically, I, I, I'm averaging the different weak relevance according to the probability, which is the probability that that context is the best one. And then uh, you could, for instance, uh, estimate by bootstrap just using the, 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 the cross validation uh, of, of that context. Uh, I had also. I don't have more than that. Okay, so in any case, I don't have much time. Uh, as you can expect, I made several experiments. Uh, I, I don't want to spend too much time in that. You can expect that it was not working so bad, otherwise I wouldn't have presented. Uh, this was compared to the rank MRMR. Basically, I, I, there are synthetic experiments. I know the Markov blanket. I know the strong irrelevant. I simply computing uh, where the, 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 the strongly uh, relevance variable are in my ranking. So the lower is their position, the better is, is my ranking. So basically you see that that uh, is, co is doing quite well with respect to rank MRMR. It's very easy because it's a strongly nonlinear setting where I have uh, more or less the same number of samples than variables, but it's strongly nonlinear. So this ranking MRMR was strongly based on linear assumptions, so like LARS, so it's not so uh, exciting that it was doing better than that. But if you compare to random forest, well, it was not so bad. And I made also some comparison on uh, microarray data, but this is not uh, the goal today. 
So what is nice in all that, apart from the definition, the fact that you can make it massive, massively parallel because the idea basically that you generate a set of candidate set, a candidate context, and then you can do in parallel. And also you can loop in parallel over the end features. Uh, that you can address the device by the fact that you have so a set. So basically the idea, do we have? Oh yeah. So th basically the idea that I'm collecting uh, context, context one, context two, context three, and each time I'm computing the information that variable x1 giving the context. And so I do for variables x1, x2 up to xn. So basically I'm filling this big uh, table and then I'm basically doing an averaging. But what is nice that I'm comparing x1, x2 exactly on the same context. The more context you have, uh, you can expect uh, the less variance by doing blocking uh, in, in the final rank. So this is the idea. Uh, I'm almost at the end. Uh, there is an easy criticism to this part. If, for instance, if you compare to random forest, and I always realize the random forest is very good in this relevance, uh, in this relevance ranking, that random forest you do once, like here, you should estimate this quantity this uh, this quantity, I mean, you, to estimate this quantity, you need to make learning. So you need to train a learner. So it could be quite expensive. So just to finalize, it, there could be an idea to make faster this technique, which is basically related to a nice property of, of uh, mutual uh, conditional mutual information. So conditional mutual information, you can see in two manners. You can see as a difference of entropy and uh, what has, have been doing so far which is basically it needs it asks you to fit these two terms and to fit them you need to train a learner so it can be expensive or you could see the mutual uh, conditional mutual information like an expectation for a given s so what does it mean that basically you are computing this quantity for different value of s so over several portion of the input space where the vector s is kept, is kept constant what is nice about that is nice that once you keep S and you focus on a specific region of the S space, this is only a univariate term. It's only the, the, the information that Xi is bringing about, about Y. So what is difficult in the first approach is that you need a learner. What is difficult in the second is that it's more a local approach. So basically you need to compute this mutual information on a, a lot of different portion of the input space. And so in a multivariate dimension uh, problem, it could be very difficult. But a, a good news coming, for instance, from, from data mining is the use of uh, locally sensitive hashing. So this is just for giving future direction, which is a very fast way to cluster high dimensional samples. And uh, so basically the idea now is instead of estimating that quantity in that manner as a difference of two, uh, of, uh, two entropies, to estimate that in that manner, so as a univariate quantity, but localized in different portion of the input space. I will stop there, otherwise I'm taking too much time to the others. So just as a take-home message, I hope I convince you that conditional mutual information is well important and rich information in supervised learning. It's crucial in feature selection to understand notion of relevance, but also notion of complementarity. I didn't discuss about that. Patrick knows about that, about, about uh, uh, redundancy between variables, for instance. And more in general, I think it should be a quantity that should be always addressed when you are collecting more variables. So a typical problem in bioinformatics is that people are not adding samples, they are adding features. Each time you create a new technology, you are not adding samples, you are adding thousands of features. And are all of them really necessary? I mean, is it really necessary to spend millions of dollars in adding uh, microRNA uh, from a, a computing, from a, a prediction point of view. I mean, is really the information that the microRNA is bringing about cancer bigger than zero when you have already the, 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 the expression information, for instance? And so I think it's very important from a scientific point of view, start reasoning in terms of conditional mutual information. Each time a new technology is created, people should assess if indeed this new technology is bringing information with respect to the final goal given the, the old technology. Conditional mutual information is very important in graphical modeling, Bayesian network, also causal inference. It could have been another title uh, for another talk. But so I think it's still an open issue. I think it's a, it's a promising research direction to, to focus on, on this aspect. That's all on my site. Okay. <laughs> Questions? Patrick.
two questions. Please. Um, first one. So I'm, I'm guessing it must be much slower than than uh, ranking or MMM. Of course. And, uh, and I mean, I assure this one is extremely much slower. Uh, this one, I, I think it could be made competitive. Okay. But then, I mean, could you com well, maybe you yeah. compare that to, to a strategy like uh, the same one not using the context, not using multiple mm -hmm. subsets, but just like the relevance criterion that uh, ah, take the, the, the next best variables? Yeah, like forward selection. Uh, okay, this it's a different print. It's for me, it's more a proper. No, I didn't compare with them. My personal experience, at least, uh, when you create a set of synthetic tasks, that the real the the the, the algorithm to beat uh, is is a uh, random forest because of the impression is uh, also not only in terms of performance of accuracy, but in terms of relevance of variables. I think is extremely. Uh, so I've always the feeling that this is more the the the, the benchmark. But yeah, th let's say that here the idea is more let's create a set of identical condition under which to uh, compare variables. While what you are saying is more the f conventional feature selection where, where okay, you had. Uh, yeah. You're changing the subsets yeah. all the time yeah. and, uh, and, uh, and average. I'm wondering if, if uh, it makes sense in the sense that. What you want is to find the best subset. Yeah, of and course. You're trying to find the best subset by eliminating all of course, different subsets. You, you could make it iterative, of course, once you start understanding that X1, X3 are more important, you, you should start creating subsets which includes X1, X3, for instance, you know. Uh, now the problem is, how much you can, if you want to do massively parallel, you cannot do that because you have to build on the past. But if you have enough time, you could imagine that the variables which are emerging are the one for which uh, you build the context and with respect to which you assess all the variables. So it's a lack of uh, expectation maximization in some sense. So you have a distribution of context, then you select the best one, then you maximize something like that. I, I yeah. The yeah, initially, the, the, but you could imagine, okay, as usual, you start with a ranking or MR, MR, which is fast, and then you select subsets coming from other. In the experiments I made, it, they, were, they were chosen one. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, my question was connected to the yeah. last question. How do you connect the set? Okay, random and the size of the set? Are they started growing randomly? Do you have any idea how many? Uh, no, no, I mean, this, this, uh, since the problem is to reduce variance, I wouldn't make too large context, otherwise it's a bit counterproductive, I mean, to, to build a large context and then have a, the problem of estimating the, the, the conditional mutual information. So all the idea that I'm aware that the probabilistic uh, relevance is not the strong relevance, but it's probably easy to estimate a good approximation of the relevance than targeting the, the final quantity. I mean, which is more or less what everyone is doing. Also, MRMR is saying, okay, instead of targeting the final quantity, I stay only with two variables. Here, the idea is to make it more flexible and to explore the space of context and to assess respect to them. Could you use our ensemble MRMR to get some priors? Yeah, I mean, you could use whatever as a prior on the context. If you have any good prior, I think uh, the idea that the better is the prior. You could use, any, as I said, again, the method itself at the the 10 steps uh, to create the new prior. So I think it's really an expectation maximization. The more information you have on the good context, the better will be the estimation of your strong, of your relevance. So this could be probably the most interesting feature, that fact that you can iteratively having features emerge. What I didn't say, uh, I think uh, this technique would be useful also in meta-analysis. So the big problem of feature selection that you take two different data sets relating to the same problem, you have two rankings completely different. Now here you don't have only rank, you have a distribution basically. So you have a distribution of this conditional, so I take the average just for the sake of having a ranking, but you could take the entire distribution. So if you have two data sets and you want to make math analysis, you could much better integrate ranking at that level than at the level of pure ranking. So this would be the other uh, idea. No, no. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, for each line is the same context, uh, then the context is changing. Okay, this is uh, about the redundancy. Uh, I'm not penalizing redundancy, and I think this is the reason why it was not doing better than the other thing in microwave. I think in this cost function you could also penalize redundancy. No, uh, this I skipped that. 
uh, but it could happen that if you have two identical variables, uh, if they are so redundant, uh, yeah, no, I don't penalize for redundancy. And uh, if they are strongly relevant and identical, so it means that they are both weak. There are no strongly relevant, basically, in that case, because they are both weakly. Okay, this is okay in the, that extreme case. Yeah, but this is something could be added. Please. Yeah. Unsupervised feature selection. Uh, honestly, I don't believe much in unsupervised learning in general. <laughs> um, if unsupervised is density estimation, I believe in that because for me the only unsupervised learning which makes sense is density estimation. And there are techniques for, uh, for feature selection, density estimation, but which go down in some sense. There are techniques. Here we are mostly talking about entropy, which can be estimated by cross-validation, something like that. In that case, you talk more about likelihood. In that sense, it's not so far. I mean, if you have a quantity that you can estimate, which is not uh, too optimistic, which is done in cross-validation, you could do also in density. Uh, so instead of uh, mutual, uh, conditional mutual information, it could be likelihood. I mean, in principle, uh, Let's say for density estimation can be put as a problem of of of, of, uh, of learning in general, of estimation in general. 